Meaning, Sex, Drugs, Disasters, and the Extinction of Dinosaurs by Sweaty Sneaky Squirrels. Carter, Drew, Bell, Emily, Cassidy, and Dwight. What constitutes a scientific hypothesis and use of speculations? Where in the essay are these definitions found? Gold describes a scientific hypothesis as a testable proposal, something that must be thoroughly tested and have much supporting data in order to be accepted professionally. While useless speculations are restrictive and no hypothesis can be formed from them, Gold claims they lead nowhere and offer no way to obtain potentially opposing evidence. He states these useless speculations will stand forever as an intriguing idea. These definitions can be found on page 295. The second question is more of a statement rather than a question. And it says, rewrite the thesis statement in your own words. The original thesis statement in the passage is this. If the growing corpse of popular science writers would focus on how scientists develop and defend those fascinating claims, they would make their greatest possible contribution to public understanding. This thesis serves to give the reader an idea of how scientists could focus on making their claims more understandable for the general public. A new thesis statement could be this. If scientists work together to concentrate on their scientific claims, they would further the general public's knowledge on certain subjects, such as the extinction of dinosaurs. So after reading Gould's point of view on different scientific theories, we can point out the major flaws in the testicular malfunction and drug overdose theories about the extinction of dinosaurs. Gould repeatedly states that each hypothesis cannot be proven because they have little to no evidence supporting the ideas, or the research itself proves the theory wrong. When evaluating Siegel's overdosing theory, Gould provides his own scientific knowledge stating that testicles and livers do not fossilize, meaning that Siegel's experiment cannot even be tested. Gould states on page 299 in paragraph 18, Callus's hypothesis on testicular malfunction is only an intriguing speculation leading nowhere. And on page 300 in paragraph 19, Gould's opinion on drug overdose states, it is simply a gratuitous attention grabbing guess. It cannot be tested for how can we know what dinosaurs tasted and what their livers can do. Livers don't fossilize any better. And in the graphic, you can see that there's no liver or testicles in the fossil. So the third question asks, um, what is the connection between the nuclear holocaust and the extinction of dinosaurs? And Gold is claiming that it's obviously a cause and effect relationship. The cause being the asteroids striking the earth and then the effects being how it impacted dinosaurs and the climate um, after that. It, he said it lowered the temperatures and created clouds of dust and darkness, which is an environment that's not suitable for dinosaurs. And it also allowed for evolution to occur because the predators like the big um, dinosaurs became extinct. Mammals um, were able to live and survive and eventually evolve due to that. So here's a short video clip that essentially explains what Gold's point of view is about dinosaurs and um, their extinction. Are we to believe that without that accident that maybe the dinosaurs would still be roaming and we'd still be in trees? Is, is evolution that accidental, that random? I think that's almost certainly so in the absolutes and the contingent science of history. But look, dinosaurs had been dominant creatures of terrestrial environments for what, about 150 million years. This extraterrestrial object did hit. There's some debate as to whether it's the chief cause of the death of dinosaurs. I think it probably was. But mammals, contrary to what a lot of people think, did not evolve towards the end of the dinosaurs' reign or after the extinction. Mammals evolved at the same time as dinosaurs. Throughout that 150 million years, mammals were always around, and they never got any bigger than this. They were tiny little maximally rat-sized creatures living in the nooks and crannies of a dinosaur's world. So they had 120 million years of competition with dinosaurs, and they never made the slightest move towards displacing them. For the activity, there is a cause and effect relationship between the nuclear holocaust and the extinction of dinosaurs. This is true. One of the major flaws in the testicular malfunction and the drug overdose theories about the extinction of dinosaurs is that hypotheses can be proven. This is false. They cannot be proven. Fun question. Which picture is an inaccurate representation of dinosaurs? The answer is A, because this picture is characterized and 
is not a good representation of what dinosaurs were in the past. And that's our bibliography. Thank you for watching.